Logical Fallacies The Ad Baculum This fallacy is committed when one appeals to force or the threat of force to bring about the acceptance of a conclusion. This is similar to our appeal to emotion fallacy. The emotion here is fear or self-preservation. Because you desire to survive or desire to avoid whatever it is you're being threatened with, you'll accept the argument even if there was no other good reasons to accept the argument. A gunman points his gun in your direction. They demand that you drop all your money and personal possessions onto the floor and run away. You will more than likely comply with this due to the threat of the gun. You feel that your life is in danger and there's no time to question whether or not the gun is loaded or real. There is no point at which you could make a comment or retort to this person's argument. They have used force to as their ultimate argument. The reason you will drop your money and or possessions on the ground is because you want to preserve your life, rather than any good logical reason. But wait, you say, it is logical to want to preserve one's life. Indeed, it is logical to want to preserve your life, but there's no good argument being given here. The appeal to force is what made you do that in the first place. You didn't want to do it, but you did do it because of the appeal to force. The chairman of the board announces all those opposed to my arguments for the opening of a new department signify by saying, I resign. Something can be seen as non-ad baculum when the appeal is not irrelevant, when the threat or the force is directly relevant to the collusion or is itself the subject of the argument. Don't touch that stove, you will get burned. If you drink and drive, you will more than likely go to jail. Therefore, you should not drink and drive. Because the conclusions here are not saying that you will not touch the hot stove because it is hot, or that you will not drive drunk because it is illegal, they are not fallacious in nature. Let's go back to the gunman and consider how his argument is still fallacious. The gunman holding the gun might indeed say, if you don't drop your money, I will shoot you. Well, we know the consequence of not dropping the money, but is this in any way similar to the hot stove or the driving well drunk scenario? No, it is not. In both cases, we can make an active choice based upon the circumstances and conclusions. In this case, we are being given no choice. We must do it or X will happen. In the case of the stove, we know that if we touch it, something will happen. In this case, we will get burned. Being warned about it may indeed change our behavior. Or it might be that we don't know what it is to be burned and we choose to touch the stove anyways. Similarly, driving well drunk may indeed have the consequence of going to jail. However, one well drunk might decide to ignore that possible consequence and drive drunk anyway. After finding oneself in jail, regret might indeed set in. These are choices that one can make. The consequences don't change simply because they have chosen to do it anyways. Similarly, the consequence of the gunman shooting you does not change even if you decide to not drop your money on the ground. However, in this case, the gunman is essentially holding the hot stove and saying, I am going to burn you with it if you don't do X. Or, the gunman is saying, I am going to force you to drive drunk so that you wind up in jail. In either case, the gunman is taking away your choice, your ability to choose. The entire argument is based upon taking away your ability to choose based upon the threat. You still, technically speaking, have the ability to choose. Like anything else in life, you can make a choice to go along with it, or not. But in this case, because life is precious, you will probably choose to drop your money. 
Thus, the gunman's argument is still logically fallacious. Is the government making an appeal to force when they tell you that if you break a law, you'll go to jail? The answer depends upon the type of government. In a democracy where one can change laws and vote in new ones or even vote out old ones, it is not making the appeal to add back in. It is simply stating a warning. You will go to jail if you are caught and you broke the law. With our government, you can change the law. But with some governments, you can't. In a tyrancy or perhaps even a monarchy, the rulers in question may decide that you as an individual or even as a group of individuals do not have the right to challenge their authority. Doing so might risk your life your freedom, your liberties, and so on. You might indeed decide to do this because freedom might become so important to you or the rules might be so unfair that challenging them is the only right thing to do. Many brave men and women have done this in the past and will probably have to do it again in the future. We should always try to make decisions based upon logic and reason rather than on fear or emotion. Unfortunately, oftentimes we don't. Remember, if you don't subscribe to my channel, you'll pay.